So if they don't delight in God, then they are serving with burden. But when we delight in God, then, uh, then His grace is sufficient for us. Okay, motivated by God's grace to serve Him. God's love is great and He wants to bless us. We can enjoy His presence and His grace and enjoy Him, we can enjoy life. So here I talk about how to be motivated by God's grace to serve Him. God's love is great and He wants to bless us. He wants to use us. And we can enjoy His presence. We can, when we love Him, when we pray, we don't just ask for blessings. We just enjoy God. Thank you for everything. I enjoy you. You're loving me. You're blessing me. Thank you, Jesus. You're loving me. Hallelujah. In this way, we'll enjoy God more. We'll have more peace and joy. We'll enjoy His presence and then and enjoy His grace and enjoy Him. And then we can enjoy life. So first we enjoy God and we enjoy life. When a Christian cannot enjoy God and they are un living under bur uh, pressure, then they don't have the joy of the Lord. They don't have strength of the Lord. And then it's hard for them to serve God. And then people not enjoying God's grace are suffering, including non-Christians and Christians. So non-Christians, they don't have the salvation so th then they won't be able to enjoy God but as Christians we should be able to enjoy God's grace but many Christians don't count God's blessings they don't count God's blessing and so they they uh, they cannot enjoy God they, they just look at the problems they forget about the blessings in the past they just look at the problems and then they're continually under pressure and then they don't have the joy of the Lord three when we have compassion on people, God is pleased with us and will bless us and our lives will go higher and higher. So when we have compassion on people, God is pleased with us and will bless us. And uh, so when we, you know, when we have the joy of the Lord and then we care about people, we want people to have this salvation also. So we care about them and love them and then God is happy and then we'll raise our life. So the more we enjoy God, and the more we want to bless people, the more God is happy with us. And then He will bless us and give us strength. And serving God and blessing people are, uh, are pleasing to God, are ways that we can go higher and higher, that is pleasing to God. Motivated by God's law to serve Him. Now, now uh, God's law plays a little part to remind us to serve God. But the main motivation should be from God's grace. So, now, we, uh, we can still remind ourselves with the law of God to motivate us, to tell us we have to serve God, we should serve God. But it should not be the main motivation. If I don't serve God, He's angry. So if a person is mainly under the law, then he's always saying, if I don't serve God, then God is angry with me. If I don't serve God diligently, people will perish and my church will not grow. So that's just looking at the negative side. Many Christians are weak and lazy, so serving God is difficult. I have to push the people to change. I have to preach louder to wake up the people. So sometimes when we serve God, we say the people are lazy and weak, and so it's hard to serve God. So we can wake up people by telling them, you know, your life is precious. God loves you. Your life can go higher and higher. And you don't have to go through all these difficulties when you love God and serve God. And you think that when you, you know, when you follow your way, you'll have more blessings. Actually, you don't. You don't, when you don't get the blessings of God, then your life will have difficulties. But when you are willing to love God and serve God, then your life will go, will go higher and higher. Are you willing to spend time with God, to follow God and love God? And then your life will be blessed by God. So we can encourage people, when you love God and serve God, you will receive blessings. So it's blessed to love Him and to serve Him. But then sometimes people say, they are, when they're motivated by the law of God, they say, oh, people are they're lazy, they cannot change, and so they feel... Uh, pressure when they serve God and I have not done well enough so I have to work harder so sometimes uh, Christians will say I you know I, I 
always saying, I have not done well enough, I have to work harder, and so there's always pressure. Then ministry is hard work with little result if people are just motivated by the law. Now we need to be motivated by the law to remind us that if we don't serve God, then we can lose salvation. And if we don't serve God much, we are not using our life, and then, our, uh, and then we prevent our life from going higher. So we can uh, remind ourselves uh, with the law, but the main motivation should be with the grace of God. God loves me and God loves all the people. God is full of love and my life is precious. When I bless people, God is happy with me. And, and I'm happy too to see people saved. I, when I see people change, I'm very happy too. I can enjoy God more. I can enjoy every day. So I hope our joy is in God and in serving God and not in just uh, physical things in the world. So how to be motivated by God's grace to serve Him? So first read the Bible to understand God's goodness. So we read the Bible to understand His goodness and have a close relationship with God to experience His goodness and His strength. So first read the Bible and then a close relationship and experience His goodness and His strength, His peace and joy. See how God has worked in our lives to change us and, you, and use us to bless other people. Thank God that He is always helping us. So we, we look at how God has helped us. And, and has used us to bless other people and thank God He's always helping me, He's always with me and believe that God is very happy with every little thing we do for Him we can be happy serving God so believe that whenever, whatever I do for God, God is very happy don't look, we don't have to look at the things we're not doing well whatever we improve, whenever we do anything right when we serve God with the right motive, we're doing things right then we thank God. God is happy with me. God is re, uh, remembering what I do and He'll reward me. Now we don't just look for the reward, but we say God is the best and He has blessed me so much. I'm happy to bless people and, and make the Lord happy. I'm happy to please the Lord. So I hope that everyone will be motivated by God's grace and say it's blessed to serve Him, blessed to to follow Him and love Him and He will be happy with me and then I can bless other people. Okay, and then help people experience the Holy Spirit to strengthen their relationship with God. So this is uh, how uh, we can raise up people when we pray for people to experience the Holy Spirit and tell them they have experienced the Holy Spirit and they can pray for other people in the future. So that's a good method that the Bible has shown us to pray for the sick and pray for people to experience the joy and love and peace and kindness of God and then we tell them you have experienced uh, the work of God and then in the future when you love God more and you can pray for people also so here it's how we can experience God John 14 27 peace I live with you, my peace I give to you. So God will give us peace when we pray more, when we love God more, we, uh, not just praying for blessings, but we love God. Thank you, Lord, you're loving me. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. When we love God more, we have more peace. That's how we experience God's presence. Oh, hallelujah, so peaceful. Thank God, you're so peaceful. When we come to you, we can feel the peace and the quietness in God. So we can pray and experience His peace and quietness. And we can go higher and higher. We can enter stronger and stronger peace. And then we can pray for people that, and then they can experience God's presence. More. Matthew eleven twenty-eight. 28. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. So our burdens can go away and I'll find rest, we'll find rest. Psalm 69, Therefore my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh also will rest in hope. So Psalm 8, 16 verses 8 and 9, verse 8 says that David said that he always said the Lord in front of him. Because the Lord is on my right hand side, therefore I will not be shaken. And therefore my heart is glad, my heart is joyful, my glory rejoices. My glory could mean my spirit. My spirit rejoices. My flesh will also rest in hope. 
so the heart is the spirit is joyful and the flesh the body rests in hope that will find comfort to the body thank you Jesus thank you Jesus we can experience your comfort your peace and your comfort in our heart and our body and Romans 5.5 5, because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us so we can experience his love also by the Holy Spirit who pours his love into our heart hallelujah when we think of God's love thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord so we experience the Holy Spirit more and then we pray for people to experience the Holy Spirit and we ask them what they have experienced if they say they experience peace and joy a love a burdens go away the comfort to the body we tell them this is God's work so every time you pray you enter this presence again every time when you pray you enter this presence and God is very happy with you and God will continue to bless you and remember you and and then you uh, and then you in the future you can pray for other people so we can pray for people to experience the Holy Spirit to strengthen the relationship with God so uh, this way uh, we can renew the spiritual strength okay this so and then Psalm 4 and 8 I will both lie down in peace and sleep so when we have God if we can lie down in peace we can relax and sleep better and Isaiah 61 1 to 2 he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted to comfort all who mourn so we ourselves can be healed of our brokenheartedness and we can pray for people that can experience a brokenheartedness that people will experience his love and healing and comfort and Mark 16 17 to 18 and these signs will follow those who believe in my name they will cast out demons and lay hand on the sick and they will be healed so the signs the miracles will follow us will in Jesus name will cast out demons and also when we lay hand on the sick they will be healed so these are ways we experience the Holy Spirit and these are ways we can pray for people to experience the Holy Spirit that they can experience the peace from the last slide peace and rest the burdens go away the joy and comfort and the love of God and then sleep better and heal the brokenhearted and drive out demons and and healing of the sick so as soon as I lead someone to Jesus or I pray for someone to experience the Holy Spirit I always always tell them isn't it wonderful that you experience the work of God do you want to be able to use by God to bless other people so immediately after salvation I already tell them they can be used by God we don't have to wait until one year later to train them immediately I will tell them you can be used by God to serve God when we we use the Word of God and also serve under the power of the Holy Spirit so ministry under the Word and the Holy Spirit at the same time that we use the Word of God and we pray for people and then they experience the Holy Spirit and then we tell them uh, ask them what they have experienced and then they say they say they experience a peace love joy and then we say this is wonderful God is blessing your life and your life will go higher and higher and uh, and do you want to be used by God and then in the future you can help people you pray for them and they will experience healing and 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 God is happy with you do you want to be able to serve God more and then if people are willing then we say that's wonderful and then uh, the more you pray the more you trust in God and the more you have the presence of God and then you will you will bless other people you'll be able to bless other people and God is happy with you okay and God likes us to have compassion so God says I desire mercy and not sacrifice so we don't serve God for money or power but have compassion on people and want to bless people so we want to serve God uh, with a heart of com compassion and then God is happy with us and then when we want to raise some people to serve God we, we ourselves set a good example of a servant of God and this attracts people to serve God 
So we ourselves serve God with joy and love, and people can see people are changed. So it's very important that we have the joy and the love of God, and then people are changed. And people see that, other people see that, and then they will admire this. They want to be able to serve God also when they see this example, and they see that their life can go higher and higher, and then their life will go higher when they trust in God. So we really appreciate and love God and are full of God's love and nature. If we don't really appreciate God and show God in our life, there will be problems in our spiritual life. So first, in order to have a good life, we want to appreciate God and love God all the time. Every Christian and every pastor, we need to learn to appreciate God and be happy because of God. God, you're so wonderful. I'm happy with you. I'm happy to have you. We are happy to have God. We are happy to receive all the blessings from God. So we are happy with God's love and His nature, His nature of love, His joy, His wisdom, His kindness, His holiness, everything about His nature. And then if people don't appreciate God and show God in their lives, then it would be hard for them that then they don't have a good spiritual life and then it's hard for them to serve God. And we always want to have compassion on people and care about them. And then people feel loved. So we care about people. We help them. And we train other people to care for people. We, we don't just do ministry as a work, but we pay attention to people. We care about them. When people come to the church, they feel loved. They feel accepted. They feel important. And then, and also in the praise and worship, they can experience the presence of God. And then these people will love God more. They will see our example. And then they like this ministry. They like the church. And then we serve God with zeal and faith. With zeal because we can save more people. We can change people. We don't necessarily look for a number, but we can see people change. And then when they're changed, they will bring the friends. So we serve with zeal, zeal, zeal that we want to serve God with, uh, with strength and motivation and faith. We believe that God can do great things. We treasure people who love God and serve God. We help them to serve better. So if there are people who love God, we treasure them. We pay attention to them. And uh, we, uh, we train them. When we see anyone love God, we, we, we uh, applaud them. We, tell them we, we tell them they are doing well. And we also tell the congregation, thank God for these people who are loving God. Thank God they are changed. their life is changed. And we don't glorify ourselves. And we are not attracting people to follow us. But we attract people to follow God. That way, people will follow Jesus and they will follow our teaching also. So I hope we all have this spiritual life and have compassion on people and serve God with zeal and treasure people and don't glorify God and glorify God all the time and attract people to follow God. Then people will follow us. So how to raise up people to serve God? First, tell people how loving God is. So always tell people, God is loving. God is full of love. God cares about us. When we pray, we can experience His peace and love and joy. That means God is loving us. God is blessing us. God is with us. So we give glory to God and we say, I thank God. God is loving us. And I can, we can experience His love. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. And two, tell, help people to experience the Holy Spirit. So we lay hand on them. To experience the Holy Spirit, we don't push them. But when we have the anointing of the Holy Spirit, when we touch people, people can feel the peace coming upon them. They can feel the peace of God coming upon them. They can feel more peaceful and they feel the power of God. So uh, to develop this anointing, we need to spend time with God. And we need to learn to love God and appreciate God. God, you're so wonderful. You're so good. I admire you. I enjoy you. And then we pray for people to experience the Holy Spirit. And we tell them how wonderful this is. And they can serve God in the future too. And teach that people who serve God are special in the sight of God. So if they serve God, they are very special. And spot people who have strong spiritual life and have compassion on others. So there are people who 
who have strong spiritual life and care about people, these are important people. Then we encourage them, we spot these people and we want to train them and lead them to help others uh, spiritually. So we, we lead them to guide them, uh, we group them together or they, we tell them to come and watch me how to help people and give them guidance and encouragement and training and train them to serve God better. So this is how we, we raise up people to serve God. We spot people, we pay attention to people who love God, who respond to God. And we talk to them in, individually. What do you think about God? What do you think about serving God? And how is the relationship with God? And then they say, I like God, I enjoy God, I have experienced God in certain ways. And then, uh, and then we try to help them to clear, to clean the life of uh, sins and negative thinking and emotions and subconscious mind problems. So help them overcome this problem and enjoy the presence of God and experience the Holy Spirit more. And we pray for them to experience the presence of God. And then they experience God more and we tell them, God is present with you and you spend more time praying and you can experience Him more and more. And in the future, you, you can pray for people. So in my ministry, I always pray for people and I encourage people to keep this anointing, to keep the presence of God, to always have, keep the relationship with God and then their life will be raised up. So I hope we learn this, how to raise up people to serve God. Then we are multiplying ourselves. Then we are training people who can serve God. Okay, And then we have to watch out for problematic servers. There are people who serve God and have problems. So first, some people set their eyes on money, fame, women, and power. So when people just want money or fame, reputation, and women, and power, then we, and these people then they should not serve God. We have, they have to overcome these problems first. People who don't appreciate God and don't love, live out God's nature, and there will always be some problem in their spiritual life. So if they, they, they don't like God and they don't uh, live out God's nature, that means they don't have joy, peace, and love, and, and they have different kinds of problems in their life, then they will, you know, then these people are not suitable to serve God unless they change. People who don't handle their problems in their life, they are affected by sins or, and emotions. So if, if they don't handle the problem, they are affected by people that get angry easily, they get frustrated, they are unhappy easily, then they have problems in their spiritual life. And then we, uh, we, these are people that we help them spiritually, but we don't ask them to serve God yet. They have to handle the problems. People who don't care about people, some people don't pay attention to people, they don't really care about people, then they are problems. People who have negative qualities such as negative emotions, sins, negative uh, subconscious mind, then, uh, or pessimism. So these people, they should, be, they should handle the problem before they start to serve God. And what we should do for problematic service, if some people are serving already, and they have problems, what should we do with them? Counsel them to find out the sources of their problems. So ask them, uh, why do they have this anger? Why do they have this frustration? What are the problems in their life? Uh, what are they ha unhappy about? So we find out the source of the problem. Is it their problem or someone else's problem? Can they handle some other people's problem? And help them to handle the emotions, so we help them how to be peaceful and not to take the burdens of other people, not to be angry because of other people, not to be hurt by people easily. Even when people hurt us, we say, it doesn't matter, I don't have to take him seriously. What he said to me, I just don't remember, I just forget, I'll just put down because it doesn't matter. They don't have authority in God if they are hurting us. So help them to handle the problem and guide them to change. So how can they handle their problem? So we want to counsel them if they are, uh, when they serve God, how can they change their way? If they cannot change, we should find out the causes and help them. If they cannot change, they should stop serving until they can handle their problems. Now, I'm talking about serious problem. If they have serious problem with 
female with money, with the emotions, then and they cannot handle it, then they should stop serving. Now this is very difficult for some pastors. Uh, now s another way is to give them less important work that is not so crucial. And then we tell them that, um, I hope you will work on your life so that you can improve. Uh, and then if you don't improve, I have to stop your ministry. So we can tell them that. And then five, people who are not willing to change should stop serving until they really change. So, if they are not willing to change, they should stop serving until they change. Uh, they have to change. Problematic service create problems in the church and in the, serve, uh, the, the crew uh, uh, of uh, people who serve God. They will create problems. So we cannot let them continue to affect the, the whole group. It's so important to handle their problems. Okay, now here are the questions. Now we have, uh, basically the questions are just going through the, uh, what we have taught. Now, if you have questions, you can send to me. You can send to me in the uh, the leaders group. Okay, in the leaders group. Okay, now it's only twenty minutes before lunch time. Should I continue the twenty minutes? Um, Now, if you uh, don't have questions now, I'll continue for the next 20 minutes and then we'll stop for lunch. For your lunch and my dinner here. So, how do we raise some people to serve God? So, if anyone serves Jesus, my Father will honor him. How does God treat people who serve him? God will honor them. God will raise them up. And then, well then, good and faithful servant. What are the two qualities that God looks for in us? It's being good and faithful. Good means uh, loving, full of love, full of kindness. Uh, the life quality. Life quality is good. And the faithful means they are faithful in doing things God asks us to do. And what would the good and faithful servants of God enjoy forever. They will enjoy joy and love. Matthew 25, 45 uh, As you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And they will go into eternal pun everlasting punishment. Are we saved by grace or by our good works? We are always saved by grace, never by our good works. Why did Jesus say that those who don't do the don't do the good things to Jesus, brothers, they will go into everlasting punishment because then their life does not show their faith. If they have faith, then they will uh, serve God. They will uh, help Jesus' brothers. So they will do it to Jesus' brothers. If they don't, that means there is something wrong with their faith. And because there is something wrong with their faith, therefore they are not saved. They go to hell. Now, but we cannot, you know, we don't talk to people and say, you know, everyone you don't serve God, you have to go to hell. We try to encourage them and say, whenever you glorify God, whenever you tell people about Jesus, whenever you are joyful because of Jesus, you are already serving God. When, whenever you welcome people and talk with them and uh, uh, help them, then you are already serving God. Why did... Uh, why did Jesus say that those who don't do the good things to Jesus' brothers, they will go into everlasting punishment? Because their life doesn't show that they have faith. And then they, when they don't have faith, they are not safe. And what is the relationship between faith and good works? We are saved by grace through faith. Faith is the way that we receive the blessings. And then when we have faith, it will bear fruit. When we have faith, we receive the forgiveness of God and salvation of God, and it will bear good fruit.
So if people don't do good works, uh, that means there is something wrong with the faith and then they don't have salvation. How should we pray for more laborers for God? That we should believe that God wants to send, uh, send out more laborers and we ourselves live out the life of God. We are full of joy and a zeal to serve God and we enjoy God and then we will set a good example and we encourage people to serve God. And then Isaiah 58, 14, Then you shall delight yourself in the Lord and I will cause you to ride on the heights of the earth. Why is delighting in the Lord important for our spiritual life and ministry? Because when we delight in the Lord, then we are happy because of God. When we are happy because of God, then our heart is open to God. We delight in God. And then God's blessings can flow through us. And then our life will be full of, full of the life of God, full of blessings, full of joy. How can we delight in, in the Lord? We delight in the Lord by counting all His blessings, His love, His forgiveness, the work of the Holy Spirit, how we experience His, His peace and joy and, and His Word is so wonderful and how He saves us, how He uh, uh, saves us from danger and from hell and how He moves in our hearts. So we remember all this, how He protects us. We remember all this and then we can be delight can be delighted in God and then we can enjoy God. <clears throat> if people do not delight in the Lord, generally what are their motivation in following God and serving God? If they don't delight in God, they, their motivation may be in money or in power or in women, so it's not the right motive. What does it mean to be motivated by God's grace to serve Him? What are the characteristics of people serving with motivation from God's grace? Motivated by God's grace means we know that God is full of love. God cares about people. God wants to save people. And God is happy when we serve God. So we are happy to serve God. So it's out of His love for us and His acceptance of us. And it's happy that we serve God, that we are motivated to serve God. And people who, who are served with a motivation from God's grace, they will, have, they will, they will be more relaxed. They will be more joyful. Whatever they can do for God, they're happy. And so, these people will show the life of God, the joy of the Lord. 8. What are the characteristics, characteristics of people serving with the motivation from God's law? When they serve God with, from God's law, then they are just, you know, they're under pressure. They, and also, they will give people pressure. They, they don't have uh, much joy. Uh, they give people pressure and... Uh, when they talk, they talk harshly. They force people to serve God uh, instead of telling them when you serve God, God is very happy with you. They think that they have to push people by the law and punishment to change people. How can we be motivated by God's grace to love and serve God? Uh, so the more we read the Bible and pray to Him and enjoy Him, then and we count the blessings and then we know that God is blessing us. Then we are more motivated to serve God. And then we look at the people we help and we see that God is blessing them. And then we are motivated to help more people. So we have a good relationship with God and we serve God with joy. And we see the work of God and then we are happy. And then we are motivated to serve God more. Ten. How can experiencing the Holy Spirit raise up people's spiritual life and their motivation to serve God? Uh, when people experience the Holy Spirit, they can see that God is very real. And they can also pray for other people and they can, the other people can also experience the Holy Spirit. So then people can sense the presence of God anytime they pray. So they're motivated by the, the presence of God. And then also when they pray for people, they see that they can help people to be healed, they can change people's life. So they know that when they pray for people with the power of the Holy Spirit, it's fruitful. So they see that it's not very difficult to serve God. And then they tell people about how wonderful God is and then people's life is changed. So we, it, two things, it's the Word of God and, uh, and uh, uh, work of the Holy Spirit. And also we need to learn be trained to have certain skills to understand people how to listen to them so first is the Word of God to help us serve 
and then uh, the Holy Spirit, experience the Holy Spirit, and then there are skills and to understand people and respond to people. This will help people uh, to serve God better. So how can people experience the Holy Spirit and how does that in influence a person? People can experience the Holy Spirit when they love God with all the heart, love them from the Spirit, and when they praise God for a longer time. And also when we lay hand on them, when we are filled with the Holy Spirit and we lay hand on them, and then they can experience the Holy Spirit more. Matthew 9, 9 13, I desire mercy and not sacrifice. What quality does God want to see in us? It's compassion. How can we develop that quality? We, we, we develop that quality when we look at the compassion of God. God is so compassionate to us. God sees our needs and God blesses, blesses us all the time. So I thank God for His compassion and God is happy when I have compassion on people. So I want to do things to please God. So my life will go higher and higher. I can bless more people. So how can we set a good example of a servant of God? How can this impact our members and motivate them to serve God? So we can s s set a good example by loving God more and enjoying God more and have the joy of the Lord, the strength of the Lord. And we love people and care about people and we raise up people to serve God and let people see how they can serve God better and how they can influence other people. So we, we motivate people and change people. And then people see that these people are changed and then they, they are motivated, they are attracted. Uh, but when they see that we can serve God with love, we care that our life is influential on people when we have the presence of God and then they are attracted to follow God. 14. How do we spot people who have the heart to serve God? How can we raise them up to be able to serve God? So we look for people who love God. So when they praise and worship, some people really, really uh, concentrate in loving God. Really, uh, uh, you know, they really devote their heart to love God and they, they always serve God willingly. They always participate to serve God together. So we, uh, so we help these people and these people who have compassion on, a, on other people, they care about people. So we pay attention to these people and talk with them and find out about the spiritual life and how they handle problems. It's very important, two qualities. It's one is uh, how they love God, how is the relationship with God, and also how they handle problems from people, how they handle emotional problems, sins, and anything negative, how do they handle that. And so we help them uh, to grow in these two areas, to have a strong relationship with God, and also how to handle the problems. And then we ask them, are you willing to be able to serve God and help other people? And God is happy with you. And then you can build up the church together with us. Then. Uh, if this person have interest, then we can train them and guide them. And then we can also, uh, uh, now the first step is to train them what to do. And then second step is to let them watch us. And the third step is uh, let them do it. And then we watch them and then give them suggestions. Uh, so this way is step by step. First, train them. Second, we uh, show them how, we, how to do it. And the third is let them do it and we watch them and then give them feedback and then see if they improve. If they improve, we applaud them and encourage them and tell them they can do more. And how can we watch out for problematic service and what can we do for them? Uh, when we notice some people always chasing after girls or they have problems in their behavior, they don't have love and care for people, they have anger, they cannot handle their emotions. So whatever problem we see or other people, you know, all the serving team should tell us uh, are there problems with some of the serving team. If some people have problems, then we talk with them and, and uh, help them. Now the reason why the other serving team members will tell us so that we all watch out together for wolves among the lambs. There might be people who don't have the right motivation or they cannot handle their problems. Then we want to train them first before they, they start to serve God. Uh, even if they're serving God, we might have to stop them unless if they repent and they're willing to face a problem. If not, 
if they continue to have this problem it will affect the whole church and the whole group okay so um, okay uh, there's only eight minutes left now do you have any questions uh, please use the leaders group okay uh, now I want to say again I noticed that some people are watching with my account pastor Yip and I want to say this that the video there is not as clear and sharp as in global fire missions ministry the reason why it's clear there because I'm using the OBS tool in the uh, in the I'm using a OBS and it is more uh, it's more clear it's it's sharper so you can just search for uh, in Facebook search for global fire missions ministries and you can see the logos uh, that there is a cross there and then you see the logo and then and then you click there and then you can watch it live there and it's sharper okay so instead of using pastor Yip's account use global fire missions ministries okay we'll, we'll close with a prayer and then one hour later we'll come back so think of God think of God's love and enjoy God and you can experience the Holy Spirit also please stand up to pray Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We love you. We love you. We adore you. We need you. It's so wonderful to have you. You're so wonderful. You're so loving. Lord, we need you. When we have you, we have everything. When we have you, then our whole life will be raised up to a higher level. Our life can be used by God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We love you. We care about you. Come, Lord Jesus. Please come and touch your people with your love, with your joy. Take away our burdens. Give us joy. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Ha, 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 ha. Thank you, Jesus. You're so wonderful. We need you. We want you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We depend on you. We need you. We want you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You're so wonderful. We rely on you. God, you are so wonderful. We trust in you. We want to love you and follow you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You are wonderful. It's wonderful to have you. Lord, motivate us to serve you. When we love you and love other people, when we have compassion on people and help them, and you are very happy with us, and you reward us, and re you remember what we do sincerely. Whatever we do sincerely to serve God, you are very happy with us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We adore you, Jesus. We need you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.